everyone welcome back to build tune race and we're actually out here racing salty it's been a minute since texas 2k i was working during an event it rained out another one but we're finally out here to do some testing for a no prep that's happening tomorrow we got salty out looking good and clean everything looks healthy after texas 2k i went over the plugs checked some other stuff out maybe added a little weight in this area and also put some new slicks on it these are the new mickey thompson low traction like no prep style 2810 5. And we have to run small tire tomorrow because there's no like true street class here locally. So we'll be in small tire. We got the small tire on there. I'm already checked in. It rained earlier, so we're getting a late start. But let's get a tune up put in this thing because there's no way that Texas 2K tune up is going to go down right now, especially with those. It may, but we've changed up a bunch of stuff and we need to practice for tomorrow. So my intent is to try to shoot for maybe like a 580 type pass out of it. I'm not trying to go 5.0s or 4.90s because I know the back of the track won't handle that type of 60 foot stuff. So we're just gonna ease out on it. We're kind of kind of blend where we know the car's been and we know what it's done on a no prep surface. We're gonna put that in the car real quick and go up there and see what it does and then go from there. Got all the ice in it? We got some ice all in it. All right. Oh, it took all 20 pounds. Yeah, and it's ready for more. Nice. So what I did is I ended up going in here. I pulled a little bit of timing out of it in the main table because we added some down in Texas because of the humidity. And then I drug this way, way out and we're real soft on the ramp. We'll see where that goes. And then inputs and outputs. I lowered the shift to RPM. And also I lowered the two step way down. We were at like 4,300 in Texas. Now we're at 3,600. So it'll be pretty lazy out of the hole. Let's see what happens. I also went ahead and started with about 11 and a half pounds in these slicks. We'll see where that starts. I think the Hoosiers has cleared down to nine, like back in Texas at LS Fest on the really terrible surface. And then I need to look at the shocks real quick. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up the rebound and tighten the compression so it'll extend and then hold while it goes down track. We probably really don't need it on the surface right now, but tomorrow when we're back of the track, we definitely will. Man, that screen is a mess. Well, not much data there. Uh, it came up on the two-step, it ran like crap, it left, it ran like some more crap. And then I lifted and then we went. But uh, looking at it, I'm just trying to look at some data and see where we're at with everything. But, you know, one thing I didn't do that I should have done was put on the two-step, clean the plugs, do all that in the lanes. I was like, man, I should do that. But I figured in the burnout, the two-step would come alive, but it, but it started to clean up, not totally. I also noticed we weren't really even in the boost through here. Um, you know, it started to make boost, but it just wasn't happy. So we're going to clean it up. I'll put on the two step again, go back up, clean up the fuel table. Hopefully the plugs are happy now and we can go down. Finally got a good pass. Yay. Yay. Not bad, not bad. So I was hoping, I think back of the track, if I can be 580, I'm super competitive. We went 590 flat. And I wanted to shoot for a 154, 60, because I think we've been like 158 on the backside before we had the better shock. So this to me is the next pass needed to be able to go down the backside and yet still be fairly competitive in small tire. Maybe not the fast guy, but we should be right there as long as that would go down through there. I felt the car wiggling around down track even on that, but the track's not insane. It's kind of cold, it rained earlier, it's not great. And the backside kind of comes around, so maybe I'll have to drive around a little bit. Maybe I can put a little bit more in it somewhere. We're gonna pull the data and see what it looks like. Left on about three pounds, and we went to as much as 22 down track, but it's just got that real soft boost curve in it. And uh, yeah, but everything seems to be working. 
Everything looks pretty good. I mean, I, I was full throttle all the way through. We were almost to the shift point. So if we go like 135, it's probably where it shift. But uh, we're making progress. We're out here for Still City No Prep here at our local track in Pueblo, Colorado. We got the Camaro here, Salty. We ended up going that 590 last night at 130 with a soft 60 foot. So hopefully that works on the back of the track today. I don't have a lot of data back here, but that's what we're here to do is learn. And we'll see how today goes. We already got teched in. We also already did the chip draw and we got our good friend Hayden Meticulous. You guys might know him on YouTube. He's got that crazy fast RX-7. So he's doing a lot of no prep. The car's been fast, so he's beat us once before here. We'll just see what we can do. We're going to run our race and see if it's enough to go around him. If not, we got all night to sit here and make passes and get data. Let's see what happens. We also did a little upgrade to the Holly last night to um, maybe help us out today. So as you guys can see right here, get it zoomed in, as you can see right there, we added the traction control ICF to this thing. So we added the traction control into the Holly. I have a drive shaft speed sensor. I was hoping the last night to get drive shaft data so I can import it into there. But as I was setting everything up, you gotta, you do have to pay for this. This is one of the features you gotta pay. And then you put a code in, you load it into the computer and then uh, it unlocks it. So we did that. You have some setup and options here. Setup, active speed management. We do have drive shafts selected, but you can go off a crankshaft or drive shaft and then in an output. Right down below, you put in your key and then you guys have setup and all this stuff, but you can either do crankshaft or drive shaft. So I do have crankshaft data from the RPM trace. We don't have drive shaft data. So I went ahead and set it up off a of crankshaft. I actually put our plot in last night from the past, and then you end up resetting the retards, whether you want, you know, the first level, the second level, or even ignition cut if it starts to break it. So all I did was pull one degree at the first stage and two degrees or three degrees on the second stage very minimal shouldn't even really slow the car down a ton if it hits it i'm just curious if it's going to work one thing i don't know and i haven't played with is like this is the zero time is what happens if you pedal and then your shift point comes out here and it's up here right so then it would want to pull timing before the shift which isn't good so that's probably why you want to use drive shaft speed so after our first hit hopefully i'll have a good drive shaft speed but if you pedal or whatever it'll kind of kill that so i don't know it's a new learning day lots of learning today We'll see how we do. Hopefully we do good and we can continue to learn. Worst case scenario, we're here to get a bunch of data and we can keep playing and trying to get this all to work. So then we start building more data for this no prep and back of the track type stuff. The only other thing I did was add a little bit to the boost curve right there where the converter starts to kind of drag the motor down and there's a little bit of a dip. Other than that, pretty much everything is the same from last night. As you guys can see, it would be right here. I know it's really bright out, but there's that little red line where it goes flat. We just put a little more boost in there. We're gonna start with that. See if it'll go down through there. So after a short rain delay, we're back and the sun's back out and everything's dried. We're gonna ice the car and then should be able to go up there for round one. So we're finally ready for round one. We got Hayden over there, ready to go. We're just chatting a little bit. And uh, so yeah, I'm gonna hand April the camera. I forgot GoPros, noob move. I even remembered it from last night. I was like, oh, I need to grab cameras. I didn't. So we'll get better at that. We haven't been racing much this year because of just schedules and rain outs and all that crap. So. Got the tune-up in it. I didn't really change it much from what I showed you guys, and we'll see if it goes down through there. Hayden already had a hit, so he has some data. He said he still spun, so he turned it down a little bit. So we'll see what his does, we'll see what we do, and we'll see um, see who gets the W. Right? Yes, we'll just do our best. Do our best. Be safe.
looked good. It, it made a great pass. Yeah. So like overall, so it went 602. And so by two tenths, that's our fastest on back of the track. Okay. So we definitely made progress. He does. He had us by probably a car and a car, car and a half. So a lot of cars are spinning on on it, that left It was line a anyways. super close race. I'm super happy with the data. Um, yeah, super happy with the data. So I'm trying to figure out where my 602 124. So better by two mile an hour, but that was 130 mile an hour tune up from the front side. So I don't know. We're, we'll, we'll put some more in it. We'll look at the data, see if the traction control did anything or not. It was a great pass though. We just need to go faster. So How does it feel with the traction control? I don't know if it even did oh. anything. Like I can't even tell. Like I, yeah. I stayed floored the whole time and it worked. It, the traction control, if it did anything, was minimal at best. Yeah. But potentially why it slowed down some, but I mean, 602, 124, so. Maybe if we have some luck here tonight and later rounds, we'll be able to go 580 on the backside. The shoe did nothing. It just popped the spring out and set it on the ground. So we need to like probably air it out or something and okay. see what it does. So we'll, uh, we'll look at the data. We'll get it turned up. We'll try again. Get it. <laughs> hey guys, so what we're doing is we're just making sure the drive shaft speed. So in the other data log is all erratic. Unfortunately, we got two data logs went on the other one. So the other data log, it like started and then it's in another data log where it finished. Figured out kind of where it spun. It did pull two degrees. The traction control worked, but it's still off RPM trace. We'll probably try that again. But then I want to dial in the RPM so we get a good RPM. Uh, or a good drive shaft speed so then we can convert over to drive shaft speed on the traction control So that's what we're gonna do. So we just jacked the car up. Our gap was too tight because it's real erratic We tightened it up to about the thickness of a thumbnail plus a little uh, It says anywhere from 15 thou to 100 thou. So we're probably a little bit on the tighter side But what we did is we spun it. I put it in all three gears and then I averaged it over four pulses um, And bam which it looked really erratic, but it was auto averaging too so now that I put it between zero and 200 mile an hour, it, it's way tighter. See AJ, look how much better that looks. So the, it was oh, auto. Was so much smoother. Yeah, so it was auto selecting the scale. So it was thinking it was zero to 20 mile an hour is all that it was looking at. Oh, well, okay. now we're looking at like zero to 200 mile an hour over the whole thing. So when you, when you scale it down, it looks way better. So um, potentially we could go to one pulse, but I'm averaging four, so we're, we'll see. Um, we're probably losing some resolution there, but I want to get it dialed in and then we'll try it the other way. So I think we got something to go. We got a tune-up in it. Dry shaft sensor looks like it's good now. Might ice it go up and make another hit as soon as we can do some grudge racing. So here's round two of small tire. We're ready to make a test hit and we're going to watch the second round since I lost the first one. They beat us first round, and then the uh, then this truck hit rips pretty good too. Should be a really, really good race.
were talking about the tire pressure. So I went a little less. Did you take a full pound on it or just a half? Half. I think I might put it back in though. It went slower to the 60. It looked, it looked, looked good, good on the hit and good down. Yeah, you know. it was good until it got down and then it got loose. I mean, we actually went quicker and I was out of it probably 100 foot early, 50, 100 foot early. Yeah, it looked good. Yeah, not bad. Hell, hell of a hit. Well, look at the d data. See what it says. Shit play. We got a drive shaft curve, that'd be green. We're going off of speed, so five mile an hour, 10 mile an hour, then like way up there, because I don't really want it to hit the rev limiter. But what was cool is this actually had a dip and I was able to smooth it out for what projected I thought it was gonna do. So now we got a better curve in here. You can see in here, it's really, jeez. You can see in here the big old point. See right there? So I'm not sure, it, I mean it spun up here, so is this spinning or not? Because it goes from like 80 mile an hour to 115, but I smoothed that point out anyway in the curve. And if so, it would have hit the limiter um, right in this point. So that's great. Projected it should work well, but we'll see. So I have it pulling, you know, three degrees here, down track it can pull up to five. It starts spinning real bad. And then on B, it's five and pull up to seven. So. We're gonna give it a shot. And I threw a little bit more RPM on the hit. We're gonna put the tires back up a half a pound because I liked where that was at and it seemed better. Go up, make another hit. See if we go a five on the backside. and I thought it was like between a 580, 590. So I was not far off. Yeah, if I got to stayed in it more after the one, two shift, like I was probably 80, 90% throttle out through there and I was like, oh shit, there's more there. And then I laid into it and then we went in, but 120, almost 128 mile an hour, which is really good. But now I just got to, which we came a long ways, but we still got to get this thing to 60 foot in the low 140s. And then that would give us the half a 10th and we'd be 585, 580, whatever, which is, Based on what I've heard and seen and know, it's about where we need to be to be super competitive. So, um, yeah, not bad, not bad. We made a lot of progress tonight and learned a lot of stuff. All right, everyone, so five second, back of the track, no prep pass for Salty, pretty stoked about that. We still got, we need to find another 10th and a half or something, but hey, shout out to that guy, it's his birthday at the track Actually, until the birthday and about 11 minutes ago yep yep so it is past midnight here i think we're done for the night we got what we wanted i want to go back look at more of the data look at more of the traction control figure out the drive shaft stuff see if it even used it on the last one and uh other than that we're gonna get this thing loaded up maybe go get some food and go home and get some sleep so thanks for watching if you would please hit that subscribe button we'll see you in the next video